हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू केनीज एडियो केयर अ ग्रुप ऑफ केनी सोल्यूशंस दिस इज पार्ट वन ऑफ लेसन नंबर वन एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स ओके नाउ एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स आर समथिंग दैट वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम यू कैन से क्लास सिक्स राइट सो atoms and molecules like i have like you have the basic idea on it right but as we are studying in this the lesson name itself is atoms and molecules it means there are some additional information and like you will grasp so many new concepts in this lesson and you will come to know about some of the most interesting chemists who were working towards in search of atoms and molecules okay so see when it comes to atoms and molecules they both are responsible for forming some tiny sand particles okay then we have like gargantuan black holes and everything in between so atoms and molecules are tiny particles responsible for making up all the objects around us okay and when it comes to a mat when it comes to matter i hope like every one of you like you have a basic idea on what matter is actually right matter is something that is occupying space around you and have mass so if i say your book your pen in your hand right then your even like mobile phone which you have in your hand right now they all are occupying some space and they have mass right so th- they are all matter but what the- what is that matter made up of that matter is made up of an atom and that is why it has been like stated that atom is the fundamental unit of matter which is the fundamental unit of matter it is the atom okay because everything that you see around you is matter and that matter is made up of this tiny particles called atoms right so it is extremely small measuring in like less than 0.1 to 0.5 nanometer so the size of the atom is very 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 small you cannot see them okay with your naked eye so you are in this lesson atoms and molecules we will be studying more about them we will be studying about like the laws of constant combination like laws of chemical combination which includes two laws under it we have law of conservation of mass and the another law that we have is law of constant proportion so these are the two different laws that we will be studying about and you know what is actually an atom see an atom is the defining structure of an element what it is atom is the defining structure of an element and we cannot break down that you we can say we cannot like broken down atoms cannot be broken down by any chemical means because they are very tiny the smallest thing that like with which a matter is made up of is its atom and the meaning of the word atom itself is indivisible you cannot divide them further okay so if you have to define atom it is like an atom is the defining structure of an element which cannot be broken by any chemical mean so we cannot break this atom by any chemical mean okay so we will be studying the like atomic symbols which have three different parts which includes like the symbol x wait let me just tell you how exactly it works okay so we have one symbol as x another symbol as a and there is one more symbol that you should be aware of that is z okay so this x it means this usually represents the element symbol okay what does it represents element symbol so i will write e because this x is representing element symbol okay after that this a represents the atomic number which is equal to the number of protons 
Okay, what does it represent? It represents the atomic number. Okay. Then we have this Z, which is the mass number. Okay. M A double -S, S mass number. So we have X representing the element that is going to be the symbol of the element. If I talk about sodium, then X will be Na. Okay, then we have atomic number, which we represent it as A. And we have mass number, which we represent it as Z. Got it, everyone? So, these are the basic things that you should be knowing about before starting the exact lesson. Okay, and there you should be like even aware of some of the elements. How do we represent them? What are the atomic number? What are the mass number? Though we have some of the tables which have been given uh, like ahead, which we will be discussing about. So don't worry regarding the same. Okay. I just want you all to write this like A is the atomic number. A represents the atomic number. Z represents the mass number. And X represents... X represents the element symbol. This is what you should be aware of. Okay. Now we will be starting with the exact lesson. What like as I said we will be having law of chemical combination to discuss. Then we will be discussing about the atomic radius under which we will be studying about the Dalton's atomic theory. Okay, now Dalton's atomic theory is like important. You can get a direct question on it. Okay, then after studying about the, you can say atomic radius, we will be discussing on atomic mass as well. Like what exactly atomic mass is. We will be discussing about the molecular mass as well. We will discuss about the molecules, molecules of elements, molecules of compounds about the mole concept, about the Avogadro number, about molar mass and there are so many things, valencies, writing the chemical formulae, ionic, like ion compounds, how to write them and these are some different concepts that we are going to study in this lesson, atoms and molecules. So now I hope like in this introduction, in the basic introduction to the lesson atoms and molecules, you actually got an idea that whatever you have studied till now about atoms and molecules, they were like the ABCDs of atoms. Now whatever you are studying is the actual thing which will be continued further as well. Like as you go in like class 10, class 11, class 12, the you can say this. Uh, the knowledge on atoms and molecules will keep on increasing, right? So now you will be studying more about the atoms. You will be studying about the laws which support this. You will be studying about the Dalton's atomic theory. And there are so many things to learn, right? So I hope now everyone has made their mind for studying the atoms and molecules. See, this is a very interesting lesson. If you understand, if you understand the concept, but... If you just keep on rectifying the concept, you will find it very difficult, okay? So, my motto behind like teaching you this lesson is you should be understanding the concept, understanding the activities which have been given rather than trying to rectify them, okay? If you have to rectify them, you can do it like without watching the video as well. That is a very simple task. But if you are over here, you need to understand the concept that is very important. You should be knowing, like if I ask you now, what is an atom? You should come up with a statement that atom, the meaning of the word atom itself is indivisible. So everything that we have around, they are like all matter because matter is something that occupies space and have mass, right? What is matter? Matter is something that occupies space around us and have mass and that matter is made up of tiny particles called as atoms okay so this is how you should be able to explain about atoms now now though i have not started the lesson but whatever introduction i gave you about atoms i hope you have understood that now if i have to represent any element how will i represent that by the symbol x 
if I have to represent the atomic number, how will I represent that? By the letter Z. If I have to represent mass number, how will I represent that? You should be knowing all of this. Okay. So now we are going to start with the atoms and molecules part and I hope every one of you are ready for it. Okay. So before starting with the lesson, we have an introduction to an ancient Indian and a Greek philosopher have like they have always wondered about the unknown and unseen form of matter now you know uh, how our parents like when the laptop mobile phone as everything was developing see you were also not having that much information but yet like as because we are like in case of technology we have bit information which is more right so how like your parents get excited lo looking at the things right so same way the ancient indians and greek philosophers when there was no information on different elements and atoms and all they were all very curious and they were wondering how many like there are so many unknown and unseen form of matter around us like now we don't know because when we go ahead like you can say when we go till uh, 2025 or 2030 there will be so many technological advancement which we are not aware of right now right and we are also curious to know like what exactly technological development can take place in 2030 and we are going to like we are waiting for it right so we are just waiting for it but there were this ancient indian and greek philosophers who were like keen towards finding out like the unseen form of matter around them because they knew that there is something which is existing which we are not aware of and we have to find it out okay so the idea of divisibility of matter was considered long back in india around 500 bc so like when it comes to divisibility of matter this idea of matter like it came around you can say uh 500 billion years ago okay uh 500 bc and an indian philosopher maharishi kannad postulated that if we go on dividing matter that is padhartha now maharishi kannad he said if we take any padhartha padhartha means any object okay we shall get smaller and smaller particles of it now let's say if you have something any object with you if you break it down into many small pieces you will get so many different different small small particles right and ultimately there will be a stage at the end where you will come across the smallest particle beyond which further division will not be possible right there will be a time when you will come up with a such a smaller particle that you cannot like divide the matter further or the atom further right so he named this particles are as paramanu maharishi kannad named this smallest particle which was not dividing which was indivisible he named that particle as paramanu and after maharishi kannad there was an another indian philosopher he was known as pakuda katyayama he elaborated this doctrine and said that this particles normally exist in combined form which give us various forms of matter okay so like after maharishi kannad we have this Pak pakuda katyayama now he was trying to elaborate his doctrine and he said that all the particles they exist in a combined form and those combined form of elements like those combined forms give us different forms of matter so around the same era asian greek philosophers democritus and leucippus so now these are the third and fourth different chemists that we are studying right first was maharishi kannad who came up he said that like a padartha when we keep on dividing it there will be a stage where we will come up with the smallest particle and he named those particles as parmanu okay after maharishi kannad the second one is pakuda katyayama he was another indian philosopher who who he was like trying to elaborate his doctrine and he said that all the you can say elements around they are present in combined form 
okay and after pakuda katyayama we have another greek philosophers named as democritus and leucippus and they suggested that if we keep on dividing matter a stage will come a stage will come when particles obtained cannot be divided further so democritus and leucippus they were supporting maharishi kannad and pakuda katyayama right so democritus and leucippus also got an idea like they also had this thing in their mind that if we keep on dividing any matter there will be a stage at the end where the particle cannot be divided further so this were like uh the observations and conclusions of many different greek philosophers and indian philosophers long before so i just want you all to like know know them maharishi kannad what he came up with pakuda katyayama what he came up with then we have like democritus and leucippus what they were suggesting i just want you all to please take a note of all of them in your book I hope everyone has even started taking it. You should be knowing Maharishi Kannad came up with padartha, and he named those as parmanu, right? So, I just want you all to uh, write those things in your book. I hope everyone is writing and taking note of it.
So see, now we studied that Democritus and Leucippus, they both came and they said that if we keep on dividing the matter, we are going to come up with like at such a stage where we cannot divide it further, right? So Democritus called this indivisible particle as atom. So Maharishi Kannad, he named it as Parmanu. Democritus just named it as atom and that is what we are studying today, right? So, and the meaning of the word, as I said you earlier, it means indivisible. So, all this was based on philosophical considerations and not much experimental work to validate this ideas could be done till 18th century because like there was no technological advancement, there was nothing. Uh, you, that is the reason like all of this experimental work, they were not validated. And the ideas were not validated in short. This were all philosophical. They were just, they have just given a statement till 18th century. But by the end of 18th century, scientists recognized the difference between elements and compounds and naturally became interested in finding out how and why elements combine and what happens when they combine. Getting it? So till the end of 18th century now, because scientists knew the difference between atoms and molecules what they did they were able to classify elements they were able to classify the compounds so naturally this happens and like this happened and they became interested in finding out how and why the elements are getting combined and what is happening actually when they are combining together so now after democritus and levioser leucippus we have Antony and Levioser who led the foundation of chemical sciences by establishing two important laws of chemical combination. So Levioser was like uh, an important, like you can say he, he played an important role in like leading the foundation for this chemical sciences. So this can be asked as an MCQ as well. Dash laid the foundation of chemical sciences by establishing these two important laws of chemical combination. So I want you all to please take a note of it from screen. I hope everyone is writing this in your book.
I hope everyone is writing about Democritus and about the Leviosa as well. Now, after this, as we just studied, that Antoni L. Leviosa, he, he has laid the foundation of chemical sciences, right? By establishing two important laws. So, we will be studying about those two important laws of chemical combination. So, see, under this law of chemical combination, what information has been given over here? Chemistry is the study of the transformation of matter from one form to other what happens in chemistry the transformation of the matter has been studied from one form to other so this transformations often occur as a result of combination of two different types of matter how does this transformation occurs it occurs because of the combination of two different basic types of matter and the combination of different elements form compound that is being governed by certain basic rules. Okay. Now, whatever we do, we have to come up with, uh, you can say, certain basic rule, right? So, we'll study about them now. And this rules, we refer to them as laws of chemical combination. What do we know this rules as? laws of chemical combination okay So I hope you all are going through it. So the first law that we have over here is law of conservation of mass. What is the first law? First law is law of conservation of mass. So the law states that mass can neither be created nor be destroyed in a chemical reaction. Okay. What does it state? Mass can neither be created nor be destroyed in a chemical reaction. This is the law of conservation of mass that we have. And the total mass of reactant is equal to sum of masses of product and masses of unreacted reactant. So when you see, when you calculate the total mass of reactant, you will find out that it is going to be equal to sum of masses of product, whatever like products have been formed. Now, here we have the example as HCl and NOH. So, you can see that when HCl hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide, what exactly do we get? We get the formation of sodium chloride along with water, right? So, NaCl and H2O has been left. So, this is how we state that total masses of reactant is equal to sum of masses of product and the masses of unreacted reactants okay so i hope everyone of you are going through it once
I hope everyone is writing this in your book. So now we have this activity 3.1 to discuss in detail. So let's see what does it exactly states. See, take one of the following sets which has X and Y of chemicals. So in X, you're going to like, you need to have two beakers, okay? In X, you're going to add copper sulfate, 1.25 gram. In the second beaker, like in second thing that you'll add it, barium chloride, that is 1.22 grams. And lastly, you will add lead nitrate that is, you can say, lead nitrate 2.07 gram. And in the second beaker, which you have labeled as, you can say, uh, Y, in that you need to add sodium chloride how much 1.43 okay how much you will take you will take 1.43 grams of sodium carbonate then we have you have to take 1.53 grams of sodium sulfate and lastly we need to take 1.17 gram of sodium chloride as well Okay, now after take, taking this two beaker, we need to prepare separately a 5% solution of any one pair of substances which are listed under X and Y each in 10 ml in water. Okay. So, once you prepare it, you have to add 10 ml of water, like you have to add that in 10 ml of water. Now, take a little amount of solution of Y in a conical flask and some solution of X in the ignition tube. Okay, after that, hang the ignition tube in the flask carefully and see the solutions do not get mixed. So, we need to make sure as you can see the flask ignition tube 
we have to hang it like that way the solution x is in the small tube and solution y is in the beaker so and we have to make sure that the solution is not getting mixed okay so put a cork on the flask and then weigh the flask with its content carefully so we have to make sure that they are not you can say uh, getting mixed that is the most important thing that you need to know and you have to check it like that way okay after that after checking that we have to like now tilt and swirl the flask so the solution x and y get mixed so earlier we didn't want the solution to get mixed but later we have to make it as such that the solution gets mixed properly and then we have to wait and you have to check what exactly happens in the you can say what exactly is going to happen in the reaction once the solution x and y gets mixed and you will see do you think that a chemical reaction has taken place and why should we put a cork on the mouth of the flask? And do you think that the mass of the, you can say, beaker and the test tube when they are mixed together, do you think that they get changed? They do not get changed, okay? So, the mass is going to remain the same and that is how we can conclude that law of like the law of conservation of mass states that mass can neither be created nor be destroyed in a chemical reaction. This is the law that like we need to even write while we are uh, explaining it. Okay, after that we will be even discussing on with respect to you need to even write the you can say explanation for it how exactly it occurs okay I hope everyone is like trying to explain it in your own words. See, even you can like uh, draw this HCL and NOH well apart, or you can just write it once. Okay.
I hope everyone is writing this part in your book. This is also very important. Okay. I hope you all are finding this very easy. See, this lesson is very easy. It's just that you need to understand the concept. Okay? So after this activity, like I, I want you all to draw the signation tube and keep so that like while you are explaining the concept, you are even understanding how exactly it works. Okay, because like in explaining the law of conservation of mass, this is going to help you. Okay. I hope everyone is drawing it. After this, we have the second law that is law of constant proportion. So this was also been like stated by Levioser. So Levioser, along with other scientists, he noted that many compounds were composed of two or more elements, and each such compound had the same elements and same proportion, irrespective of where the compound came from or who prepared it. So while they were studying more about compound, they found out that compound is something that is made up of two or more elements and each compound can have either same element in same proportion or it can have different elements in, like different elements in different proportion okay so in a compound such as water the ratio of mass of hydrogen to the mass of oxygen is always 1 is to 8 it means 1% of hydrogen and 8% of oxygen that is how the like the ratio is and that is how a water molecule has been formed okay so whatever source of water it is be it like pond lake river any source of water water has always been formed by one like in the ratio 1 is to 8 where 1% of hydrogen combines with 8% of oxygen and that is how one molecule of water has been formed okay thus if 9 gram of water is decomposed, 1 gram of hydrogen and 8 gram of oxygen are always obtained and that is why it has been said that water molecule is always been formed in the ratio as 1 is to 8. So similarly, after water, if we check it with ammonia, ammonia is going to have the formula of ammonia is NH3, right? So ammonia is going to have nitrogen and hydrogen. And they are always going to be present in the ratio as 14 is to 3 by mass. So 14% of nitrogen and 3% of hydrogen. 
so whatever the method or the source from which we are obtaining this ammonia ammonia is always going to be present in the ratio as 14 is to 3 so this led to law of constant proportion that whatever element or compounds that we have around they have a definite proportion or a co constant proportion by which it has been made and this law of constant proportion we also know it as law of definite proportion because as we saw for two different examples considering ammonia and the other one as uh, water right water is made up of water is made in the ratio as 1 is to 8 1, one is of hydrogen 8 is of oxygen when it comes to ammonia ammonia is made as the ratio is 14 is to 3 so 14 percent of nitrogen and 3 percent of you can say hydrogen makes up ammonia so this is how we can prove the law of constant proportion which is also known as law of definite proportion so this law was stated by Proust as in a chemical substance the elements are always present in a definite proportion by mass so the mass of them are neither going to change any time the mass is always going to remain constant so whatever elements that we have around they are always going to be present in definite proportion by mass and the next problem like after stating this law of constant proportion and law of conservation of mass the next problem which was faced by scientists was to give appropriate explanation for this law because the explanation that they came up with it was like there was some or the other question which was arising and the scientists were not able to answer them. So British chemist John Delton, he provided us the basic theory about the nature of matter because like we came up with the different laws like conservation of mass, law of constant proportion but explaining those uh, you can say laws were very important with proper explanation. So here John Delton came into picture and like he started stating about the basic theories about the nature of matter. So here, Delton picked up the idea of divisibility of matter, which was till then just the philosophy. So we just saw that there were different philosophies which were given and like people were not aware of what exactly happens over there, right? So this philosophy was converted into a state, like you can say, he gave a statement for it and he said, he came up with this idea of divisibility of matter, which was earlier said by Maharishi Kannad, then we had like many different posts like individual who came and they just gave this philosophical idea but till 18th century their idea like was just was just a philosophy but now we consider them to be a statement right so he took the name atom as given by the greeks and said that smallest particles of matter are atoms so he was like if we have any object around us any matter around us if we keep on dividing them further we are going to reach a state where we are going to obtain something which will be indivisible and that indivisible tiny particle we know them as atoms okay so his theory was based on law of chemical combination and delton's atomic theory provided an explanation for the law of conservation of mass and law of definite proportion as well before that there was a like huge question mark on this both the laws but as and when delton picked up the philosophical concept given by the greeks and in, even like indians were also involved there right we cannot forget maharishi kannad for the philosophical statement that he gave which was further used by delton to prove both the laws of chemical combination that is law of conservation of mass and law of definite proportion which is also called as law of constant proportion so I want each one of you to please write both the law, like the law, write a note on this law of constant proportion and how exactly this law, both the law of Leviosa was considered further. Like it was all because of the entry of Delton into it. So that led to the formation of both the laws and acceptance of both the laws you can say. <coughs> So I hope everyone is writing this law in your book.
i hope everyone is writing the law of constant proportion you need to take a note of it even like uh, the explanation of water and ammonia okay so after this now in the next class i'm going to start with the rest of the part where we will be studying more about john delton we will be studying some of the postulates like this are the six important postulates of delton which we will be discussing about after the delton's atomic theory we will be discussing about what exactly is an atom so we know that atom is something which cannot be divided further right but it is made up of three different parts that is protons electrons and neutrons so we will be studying about that then we will be discussing about the atomic radius in detail after that we are going to discuss some of the modern day symbols of atom of different element so now this is this is not how we represent hydrogen carbon oxygen and all right now we have some of the modern ways of representing all of them so we will be studying some of the symbols of elements and after that after discussing more about the symbols and atomic radius we will be discussing about the atomic mass as well like what exactly is atomic mass so here we have the table representing the atomic mass of different elements after that we'll discuss on how do atoms exist exactly okay and here we will complete with the atom concept and we will start with molecule part like what is a molecule how are like what are the molecules of elements then we have the atomicity along with different names of the elements given over here we will be discussing about the molecules of compounds then after discussing about molecules in detail we will be discussing about what is an ion okay so here we have some of the ionic compounds along with the ratio by mass given and then we will be studying how exactly the chemical formula can be written so there are certain rules that we follow to write the chemical formula we will be discussing on them we will be discussing the valencies of some common ions okay now as i said that there are certain rules that we follow to write a chemical formula right so we will be studying all of them we will be studying about the formula of simple compound then after that we have molecular mass and mole concept to discuss in detail we'll discuss that we will discuss on the formula mass unit mole concept in detail then we'll discuss the relationship that exists between mole avogadro's number and mass because knowing this relationship is again very important and then we have some examples to discuss about the mole concept okay and after studying all this we have a summary discussion for the whole lesson atoms and molecules which we, we will be like doing at the end of the lesson but after this we have like some of the exercise questions to discuss as well so i just want each one of you to please go through the exercise questions which have been given over here on screen So I hope everyone is going through the question which have been given on screen. So all together, like there will be many questions, and even as we saw that there are some solved example as with respect to mole concept and also we will be having some numericals on them as well.
so this is the numerical that i was talking about so here we need to find out the mass of 0.2 mole of oxygen atom and even the mass of 0.55 mole of water molecules then again we have a numerical where we will be discussing the number of molecule of sulfur present in 16 grams of so, so sodium sulfur okay so we'll be discussing all of that so all together like we have this 11 questions to discuss and then we have this came for writing the formula which we will be discussing at the end of the lesson and this is how we are going to complete this lesson atoms and molecules so i hope whatever we discussed about this lesson today in short you all are very much clear with that now rest of the part for the lesson atoms and molecules i will be like completing that in, uh, like starting with that in the next part but make sure whatever we have discussed you are revising them though we will be like start the next part by revising it and i hope every one of you have understood and like taken a note on whatever has been discussed today okay so whatever has been left i'll start with that in the next part thank you everyone